Hello, hello, hello. My name is Lance with No Stigmas. And I'm Maggie with No Stigmas. And we are here today to talk to you about Mental Health Action Day. Um, we are usually behind the camera, behind the keyboard, um, but today we thought we would take action of our own and step into the light uh, to share with you some of our personal lived experiences and how they relate to the mental health work that we do here at No Stigma. All right, so now we're gonna do a really quick rapid fire FAQs. So the first question that we have is, what skills do you need to be an advocate? Great question. And actually this one comes up a lot, variations of this one. What do I need to be an advocate? How do I advocate? Um, what is advocacy? So again, we'll go back here to a couple of solutions that I think that our organization provides for you. The first one is our advocacy training, um, ally and advocate training, a program. Again, this is free and also can be sponsored if your organization um, does sponsorships. Uh, it can be delivered in person and also virtually. And um, basically, it teaches you those skills. The skills that you would need to be an advocate are really simple. It's, um, you know, understanding people, seeing them where they are, really listening, being mindful of stigmatizing language, um, being mindful of not saying things like, wow, that's so crazy, and the weather's so bipolar, things like that. Really being careful and um, deliberate with the way that we treat each other and ourselves. Don't forget, advocating for yourself is a big part of it. So I would say um, to learn more about the skills that you need to be an advocate, I would definitely say scan that QR code, go visit nostigmas.org um, and contact us so that we can get you on the right track. Um, with the advocacy training. Um, the next thing I would say for skills that you need, um, I really, really would also really encourage um, looking into our Youth Matter workshop. Again, this is another free or sponsored workshop that can be delivered in person or online. And it trains and supports um, people who are working with youth and also youth themselves on mental health. So when you talk about skills to be an advocate, we have to understand, um, we have to understand what to look out for. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we're not a crisis response team, but mm -hmm. when, you, when you think of skills, it's like, well, okay, we need to give you the ears. We need to give you the, the kind of the words. We need to help, we need to give you those things so that you can navigate situations in life that come up that you may need to be an advocate or you may feel that you need to be an advocate. Um, or how you can maybe advocate for yourself in a situation. Maybe um, you're not feeling heard or seen in your school. You're not feeling like you're, um, people are, are listening to you. you you don't know how to be heard so there's a sense of self-advocacy there as well what are some examples of stigma so there are so many different things that are under this umbrella of the term stigma um, but in the context of mental health which is a lot of what we've been talking about today um, stigmas are kind of any word or phrase or action that overgeneralizes or misrepresents mental illness in some way, um, in especially in ways that could be harmful or offensive or could hurt the community of people that they're referencing. Um, and like a lot of our team members say, sort of trust your gut with what you think a stigma might be. If you are saying something that you get a little bit of a weird reaction to or it feels a little bit off or you feel like maybe somebody might have their feelings hurt by this, it's probably a stigma. Um, and so as far as examples go, it, they're they're everywhere. They're all around us, like you said, with people saying, um, that's so crazy, or, oh my God, you're insane, or things like that, that um, if you say them around a person who may be struggling with those words and those terms and, and identifying who they are and things that are going on with them internally, it definitely can be harmful to those people. So you got to watch out for that for sure. Mm, totally. Our question number three, Lance, is how do you share your voice? That's awesome. So that question is often asked um, and I'm very thankful that no stigmas is often the answer. So at No Stigmas, we have a program that we call Speak. Um, it is one that we haven't talked about today that I wanted to show you. Um, how do you share your voice? So Speak, um, just like you would think, is an, a program that is a little less formal and more of like a coaching. So we will give you guidance and training on how to share your story. Maggie and I have taken action today uh, and put our advocacy to the test um, in sharing our story with you. And basically what we've done in a really long form that you would do in about a 15 minute form is learn how to 
tell your story, um, whatever that story is, share your voice. How do you do that? How do you craft your, um, your mental health history into a succinct deliverable that people will hopefully um, feel um, the impact from? Um, so something that we have done to give some of our advocates and allies and um, some of our members a voice is through our podcast series. So this is our digital series called Unsilent. Um, and this is where we have given a platform to 12 different guests to really open up and share their stories, share what they've struggled with, share their highs and lows, um, and really be open and honest about their experiences so that hopefully when other people watch this series or if you listen to it, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, you will feel empowered to share your story as well, or you'll be able to relate to some of the topics that they're discussing. Um, all right, our next question, we'll keep on going rapid fire, um, that comes up a lot that we see is, why do I keep spacing out? Maggie, how would you answer that? Um, it's a very general question, but I guess I can only answer it to my own experience. Um, as we've said before, we can only talk about the things that we know for ourselves. Um, so for me, spacing out, can encompass a lot of things. Spacing out can happen in the workplace. It can happen in an academic setting. It can happen in a social setting. Um, and for me, it's something that comes from my ADD. So ADD, a lot of times you are either very overstimulated or you're very understimulated in what's happening with the world around you and internally. Um, for me, a lot of times it was very internalized. Um, and so you feel like you can't focus on the task at hand. You feel like you can't present yourself in a put together way because you have all of these things happening in your mind. Um, and so if you think that that's something that is constantly happening with you, if you relate to that at all, then there are a lot of different ways that you can do some research on ADD. Um, you can talk to your main doctor, you can talk to a therapist, you can talk to a counselor, you can talk to friends you know that have ADD. Um, I know that was super helpful with me with my process in going into a diagnosis was talking to people who had it and finding that common ground and seeing, okay, I do sort of feel this way too. What's the next step in how I figure out if this is ADD or not? Um, and spacing out does not always mean that you have ADD. It, if you space right. out a couple of times, if you did get a lot of sleep that night, if you're really hungry and you can't focus on anything but the cheeseburger you're about to have for lunch, that doesn't really <laughs> necessarily. It's true. It's true. It crazy. comes up a lot. People ask all the time and they, they click through to no stigmas. You know, why yeah. do I keep spacing out? Yeah, but if you are feeling that way, there are tons of resources that you can find to really do some research on that and or just talking to a professional if you do see someone regularly. Um, it's it can be a serious thing and it can lead to you really figuring out how to navigate that. So totally. Yeah. Awesome. And what is our final top five? Our last question, Lance, is can you work full time with bipolar? That is a great question. Um, so, yes, you can work a full time job. You can live a full, beautiful life with bipolar mm -hmm. disorder. Um, my sister is a great example of someone other than you know referencing myself, but I know that she shared it on our podcast. But um, of someone who has gone on to do amazing, incredible things. Um, and that did not stop her. That was just an understanding and like, hey, this is just a part of me and we're gonna keep it moving. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, that's the kind of the way that I am too. Um, we also had another guest. We actually had two other guests I wanna reference that I, I wanna reference on Unsilent. Um, if you scroll through and you find an episode with a fantastic screenwriter and actress, Erica E. Wade, yes. um, she talks about um, her bipolar diagnosis and talking about, um, oh, got the chill bumps again. She <laughs> was talking about um, every day is not going to be a great day, but yeah. every day is not going to be a bad day. Sometimes they're just days. Yeah. Um, you know, and if it's a bad day today, just it's going to be okay tomorrow. Don't worry. Like, don't think that the whole world's going to end. But I think a lot of times, my, you know, with my diagnosis and my brain and how it works, um, there are days, you know, I can even think back to last week where I thought the world was ending and that's it. Like mm -hmm. I can't, there's no light after this. That's it. And of course that passed, yeah. um, you know? And so I think that's, that's really powerful. And also she reminded me that every day I'm going to fight every day I'm going to live and every day I'm going to win. I love that. I absolutely love that. She said that in that episode. It's one and of my quotes from the whole series. I tell her I, she's an old, old friend. I was happy to have her. And I said, um, 
I'm going to put that on every post-it note I ever write again in my life. Like everybody's nice. going to hear it. Um, the last thing I would reference with working full-time and, and living with bipolar, um, another success story is from um, um, an author out of the UK named Oliver Seligman, who wrote a book called Befriending Bipolar. And he is actually also a monk. Um, but before that, he was a broker and had a really, 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 um, what he describes to be a very like stressful life and then just wanted mm -hmm. a big change and came into this diagnosis and um, has had a really full life. Um, with the diagnosis. So again, there's lots of people, I mean, Unsilent was named after and inspired by a quote by Demi Lovato, who said, we have to be unsilent about mental right. health. Um, yeah. So that's where it came from. And she has, by, you know, has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So um, I work um, doing, doing the, the job thing and um, mm -hmm. it is possible. I think it is one thing I'll say though, um, and again, you'll you'll learn more in our workplace wellness workshop and with this idea of how, how you create like a sustainable, healthy, non-toxic working environment um, is to navigate how much of yourself you're willing to disclose because at the end of the day, like that's your choice. So, so if you don't want to overshare or you don't want everyone to know everything about you, that's okay. Um, but know that, you know, in, in some of the clips we saw th that it's okay if you do. It's okay if you yeah. you do over you do share, and because there's a huge chance that people will love you and, re and receive you and support you. You know, yeah. so not to be afraid. I think this question, a lot of variations of this question come up, which drive people to us. And you know, it's can I work with with bi bipolar disorder? Will I be fired if I have bipolar disorder? How do I tell my employee uh, my employer about bipolar disorder? It's a lot of uh, fear and anxiety ar around this idea of being of being kind of a Think being caught you know yeah. being caught caught doing something that you're not supposed to so i would say relinquish some of that fear um and again please please check out um any of our workshops we've talked about today you can scan the qr code that you see on the screen it'll take you to our website nostigmas.org where you can fill out a quick contact form check a couple boxes and let us know what you're interested in learning more about um, the workshops are an absolutely fantastic first start really hope that you enjoyed our 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 personal stories, our lived experience, hopefully inspired you, helped you, gave you some light. Thank you, thank you so much for being with us. Maggie, any final words? Happy Mental Health Action Day. Yay. <laughs> take action, take action, and don't forget action. Action. action can be sharing your story, action can be taking a workshop, action can be donating, action can be just sitting at the kitchen table talking to family about something uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome, well thank you all, be well, be safe, and we will see you, see you, see you soon, bye. Bye.